Hey guys, I'm Frankie. And I'm Alex. And together we're FNA Van Life. And this is all of our 2019 Ram ProMaster. 3500 extended. First we have a two burner propane stove. The propane tank is underneath the sink. It's all sealed and vented properly so it's a safe propane method but it's super handy to have it on top. In our first van we actually had a cook stove that we had to bring out every time and it worked but it got annoying after a while especially when all you want in the morning is a nice hot cup of tea and you don't want to have to like set up the butane and deal with all the whole thing so it's nice to just have the two burner built in. So the hot water heater is housed inside of this little nub here. We love having the seat because it actually gives us an extra place to host people People. So when we're all sitting around, we can sit here or sit here and look out at the beautiful views, but it also has actually three purposes. In here we have our Mr. Buddy Base Camp Heater. It's super awesome. It's a shower. So the shower hose goes outside or inside. We'll show you our inside shower in a hot minute. And all you have to do is put the pump into a bucket of water. So we'll either gather water from the lake or a river, or we'll just grab some water from our 40 gallon water tank and have a nice hot shower anywhere. Because we had a little bit of extra space, we wanted this to be high, but then need to be tall enough to sit on comfortably. We gave Paco his own little storage area at the bottom of the nook here. So this is just a little door here and Paco's jackets, his poop bags, balls, and everything like that is in here for our little pup. The only thing that we didn't build in our whole van are these two upper cabinets. They're from a company called Overland Interiors and he actually designs these super amazing laser cut cabinets. Everything is super high quality. The honeycomb on the inside is really beautiful and they're so sturdy. We love them so much. Andy is amazing. We have our knife block, which is a new addition. These things never jiggle loose, which is actually amazing. I was kind of nervous that we would be going down like bumpy forestry roads and our super sharp knives would be like bouncing all over the van and like causing havoc, but nothing has ever come off of here, which is amazing. We have our sink and faucet. This is the extendable version. So we use this as our kind of washing water, dishes water, and then we pour all of our drinking water into the Berkey. The Berkey has a charcoal filter which makes the water taste really good and also gets rid of anything that you wouldn't want to drink. So we could actually pull lake water, put it into the Berkey and make it potable, which is really cool. We also have our soap pump here, which is really handy. So it's just got like a little bottle underneath that you fill with soap and then you don't have to go reaching and like digging underneath and you don't leave it on the countertop to run away while you're driving. Over here we have our controller for our Wabasto heater. We actually bought the knockoff uh, Russian Wabasto, which is half the price of the actual Wabasto. And it's been working great, especially up here in Alaska when the nights and the mornings are very crispy. Like I mentioned, we have our propane tank over here in the sealed container. I have a basket on top of that with all of kind of like cookware and like random dish rags, things like that. I was worried that the propane cooktop would get really hot underneath and maybe things in there would burn, but I've had this like a full blast and like put my hand on this thing and it's like warm. So not a fire hazard, nothing to really worry about there. Then we have a tiny little garbage can, fire extinguisher, our water pump, water filter is on the inside here, and then dog food, stuff like that, just like random kitchen accoutrement. Over here we have our prep area. All these countertops, we actually dirty poured epoxy ourselves. This was our first time doing it. So both countertops and the table in the back, we did at the same time live on YouTube, which was very stressful. <laughs> <laughs> but it worked out really well. We love how they turned out when the sun glistens on them. They actually kind of like reflect on the roof and it almost looks like you have this like underwater feel, which is really neat. So this is where I will do all of my chopping. I'll bring my cutting board up on here, making dinner, things like that. We have two very deep storage drawers. They're both on soft closing hinges and magnets so they never fly out when we're driving. This one is all cutlery and like kitchen utensils. And then this one is like our mishmash drawer, which is so hard to open because it's very heavy. It's just full of random like household stuff and some uh, filming stuff, camera gear, things like that. 
Over here, this is our super fancy pantry. This was a must. We had this tiny little storage nook and we thought that it wasn't gonna be enough room to like house anything but we actually made it work and this is so handy all of our spices flour sauces things like that i don't know where the hell this stuff would go if we didn't have this stand-up pantry this is a 63 liter ice co fridge we have two little locks here at the bottom and then it just slides right out so smooth it's got latches on the front and then it actually stores so much food. We can go about a week and a half to two weeks with just what we can fit in this fridge here. We have 120 outlets, USB power stations here as well. This is kind of where we charge our phones and things at night. Up top, we have two extra storage containers. This one is all of like my toiletries and makeup and nighttime stuff. Frank doesn't get a lot of storage space in the van. And then this is other electronics and random lighting kits and board games and things like that. So the art on the wall is all by people that we know and love. Frank's aunt actually drew the, or painted this for us before we left, which was really sweet. Our friend Amber painted this. It's like an under the sea motif. And a girl that we met on the road called Pine Bones actually designs these really cool graphic prints that we love. And then the mirror, you have to have a mirror in a van because especially a stationary one, it's just so handy to be able to not have to look at yourself on a tiny little compact while you're getting ready in the morning. So that was a must. And then I made this little guy. He's super cute. He's a high G reindeer. So the secret behind our art is actually that this one is housing our cell phone booster. So right behind this one, just held up with Velcro, our cell phone booster is here. It kind of had to live here based on how long the cords were because you needed to have one of the units in the front, one of the units on the roof in the back, and then this was literally where the cords met. So we were like, all right, we're gonna have to make it work. And I think that this is a pretty clever storage way to hide it and you would never know. We decided to live in a van and travel full time back in 2018, but we actually took a full year of planning, finding the van, building the van out. Our first van, we went really cheap. We bought a $4,000, 2003. Dodge Sprinter, 2,500 yeah. extended. It was, it was a nice van, but it was a rust bucket. It was more one of those vans that we didn't know whether we were gonna do this lifestyle for a while. We thought we were just gonna be on the road for a year, find a place, settle down. Yeah, we, we fell in love with the lifestyle. It was just like an amazing opportunity to explore and see so many different places, meet so many different people and cultures. And like we were talking about earlier, the best experience in this is the fact that you're meeting so many amazing people. The people out here on the road are really what make it so special. The fact that we get to see so many beautiful places, like right now we're sitting in Alaska in our van, we never thought we'd be here. Mm -hmm. So after about 10 months in our first van, we sold that van, moved into another guy's van, did a three week cross country trip with him, which was super fun found our this van in Texas, built it out in Florida, and then we've been back on the road since the beginning of May, which is crazy. We absolutely love living in a van. It's really about the places that you get to visit, but again, the people that you get to meet, and just having the freedom to kind of wake up when you want, go where you want. If you don't like a place, you can leave. If you love a place, you can stay as long as you want. And it's just a really cool way of life that you know, we've certainly fallen in love with yeah. and we think so many other people would really enjoy it too. To give you guys a little quick backstory, Alex and I met via like a dating website called Bumble and actually on our first date, I told Alex that I was going to be leaving soon to be traveling all around North America. And I was like, cool, I don't want to date you anyways. And I jokingly invited her <laughs> and now we're sitting here. Yeah, <laughs> so it's been a whirlwind of an adventure, but wouldn't change it for the world. Yeah. As with everything in a van, you can't have one area just be dedicated to one thing. It's gotta have multiple uses. We loved having a couch in our last van, and so we knew that it would be really handy just for, you know, like lounging on the couch, having people, hosting, entertaining. But the couch also has 
two other secrets. It is our toilet and our shower. So on this side, we have our toilet. It's a DIY composting toilet. It has a Johnny compost urine diverter and then just literally a Tampa Bay Buccaneers bucket, which Frank really loved because, you know, sports. sports. <laughs> In the first little compartment here, we actually have a spade and this is where our composting dirt goes. So after you go to the bathroom, you would just shovel some of the dirt onto it in the composting toilet. And then that we empty out maybe like once a month. Like it's not very often. This is an emergency use toilet. Um, it's super handy to have on the road, but we didn't want to spend a thousand dollars for one of like the legit composting toilets. And this honestly has no smell unless you don't cover it fully. So make sure you cover it fully. On this side, we have basically all of our laundry lives in here. You need to have a place to store your laundry because the bag gets really full really fast, especially with two people in a van. And then the entire container here, including the lid, is all flex sealed. So the whole thing is waterproof. And then the shower actually drains right out. So just like we would shower outside, right onto the ground. We use biodegradable soaps. We magnet our shower curtain up to the ceiling and then shower right out the base of the truck. But then there's no wind, which is really nice. Up front, we actually customized this storage area. So we got rid of the bulky headliner that comes with the Ram Pro Masters, ripped that out and then built a completely new headliner. Well, not completely new, but we added the wood up top and we actually made it see-through because the boys just went absolutely nut bars and decided to make a one day project into a one week project. So it's pretty cool though that we have a see-through headliner. Not many people can say that. You have to have curtains in your van. We do have window covers for all of the windows, but when you're trying to temperature regulate the back area, being able to shut off the front is so handy. Whether it's wicked hot or wicked cold, having the insulated blinds will keep whatever that temperature is out of your living space. So you need a really good thermal curtain in the front. The tin roof is an upgrade from our last van. We actually bought the styrofoam tiles, Spanish ceiling tiles for our last van. Loved the look of them, but because they were styrofoam, they were super hard to clean and you're in a van. So we would often like, like, you know, like hit it or something would nut and then you would end up with like dings in your styrofoam. So this time we actually went for the real tin. So this is American tin ceilings. It came in the white color. And the benefit of this is that it's magnetic. So the entire roof now, the entire ceiling is magnetic, which is so handy for the shower curtain, any kind of knickknacks. We will actually like hang our towels up to dry in the middle of the living space because we can just pop them on the ceiling. So we do have swivel seats on both of the chairs. I probably wouldn't have splurged for the second swivel seat because we didn't want to splurge for the really low profile ones. The swivel on the driver's chair is super high and almost makes your line of sight kind of disappear when you're driving. Like if you put the visor down, it's like right in front of your face and you can, it's like hard to see. So that's a little bit of a safety problem. And we actually really only ever swivel the passenger seat around. So I would either save the money, not do both or spend the extra money and get the low profile one just for the passenger seat. But because of the ProMaster sitting so high from the ground, when you sit in this chair, your feet are actually like dangling so we wanted to put something here to kind of allow your feet somewhere to rest, but we didn't want the space to just go to waste. So we have a fake front on this that's just magneted in. And then we have additional shoe storage here because I own a lot of shoes. The final feature of the front here, which is super cool, is actually this light that we've put here. So our van came with a factory light in the middle of the space that every time you open the door, the factory light turns on, which is actually really handy because when you come back to your van in the middle of the night or whatever, you open the door, you automatically have light. You don't have to search for a remote or anything like that. But the where it was positioned was just stupid and we weren't going to have it in the middle of the van. It just would like ruin the entire aesthetic. So we rejigged the light to be in this wooden piece here. So it still turns, well, it probably won't turn on now because we're, the engine's not on. But so when we open the door now, the light comes through these little bubbles, which is actually kind of cute. And now we have a little shelf here where we put Paco's leash and our other cell phone booster is actually stored up here. So we also have a Pep Wave internet maker 
maker. So that is super handy because it can take internet like public Wi-Fi and boost the signal and give you actually really strong internet. And it also has a AT&T SIM card in it. So we can be 30 miles outside of range and still pick up AT&T signal. So we can be off grid anywhere and be true digital nomads. All right, so now we make it to the back area. This is another living space, our dining room table, an area where we can hang out with a bunch of friends. We could fit six people around this table, which is awesome. It swivels out of the way when you jump on in. Alex could work on one side, I could work on the other. One thing we really want to have in this van was to have the ability to look at each other while we eat dinner. In our last van, we had to sit next to each other at the table, and it just didn't create that like romantic experience that we kind of wanted. So to be able to sit across from each other, I feel like is a huge upgrade in this van for us this table also doubles and turns into a bed so all you got to do is pop this little guy off drop it down it fits right in we take our cushions put them on top and it becomes a bed area what we did is we made this little area right here that pops back and then we have all of our clothing storage on both sides so it's more like alex's side alex's side and then like my side you know <laughs> Once again, she has way more things than I do. Uh, we love having the windows on the on the side of the van because it creates a lot of light. And speaking of a lot of light, we actually have a skylight back here. The skylight creates tons of extra natural light. Last time we had puck lights in our van and it was such direct light that it like hurt your eyes. So we tried hiding that with using the wood trim to put the recessed lighting in and it then it reflects off of the tin which makes a beautiful light setting in here as well as this having a blackout setting and then it also has a screen for bugs so that way you don't have to worry when you open up the hatch for a nice airflow so having the table set up is really nice because we could serve a lot of we could have a lot of people here a lot of guests but you have to change this into a bed every single night, which unfortunately becomes a burden sometimes. So you have to be willing to make that change. Now, there are days where we know we're gonna travel a lot, and when we are traveling a lot, we decide to not make it into a table and we just leave it as a bed. So sometimes Alex and I will just hang out here, we'll throw a pillow behind us, feet kicked up, and we'll work just laying in the bed, um, which honestly, sometimes it's nice just having it like that. But it is also great that when you have two other couples that you're hanging out with to be able to actually host and hang out in the van, play cards, play different types of games. And we, we love hosting people. So I think it's a great addition, but it definitely makes it a little bit difficult. So down here in this area, we have our little electrical control station. This allows us to turn our inverter on so we get the 120 like house power. And then as well as we have a bunch of little um, we have a bunch of little switches here. Each switch does has its own purpose. The one that's on right now is actually for our PEP wave, so we could create that Wi-Fi signal. That way we could work off grid. This one here is the cell booster, and then down below we have our pump. You always wanna have a switch for your pump that's accessible. That way if you're ever out of water, you can shut it off real quick. That way you don't run your pump dry and kill it. Uh, we have a propane and CO2 detector down there as well. Our battery bank, it is 300 amp hours of lithium ion. Um, so we have plenty of battery to be off grid. We also have a DC to DC charger, which is a Renogy 40 amp charge controller, which allows us to not ever really have to stop and plug up to shore power, but we do have that option as well, which we can show you outside on the van. So underneath this bench area here, you can lift this up. You could access both sides from underneath, which gives us tons of opportunity to access our storage space without having to open up the back area. And also in this area here, we have our fuse box, which has all of our little plug and play fuses. If something goes bad, we could easily troubleshoot right there and fix what we need to fix right away. Previous to this lifestyle, I was working as an air conditioning mechanic in local 638 in Brooklyn, New York, and it was a tough job that I was spending like three hours a day commuting to and from work. So I was losing a lot of time in my life, which was a big reason why I wanted to make the leap to do something that I want to do. The transition itself was kind of difficult because you have all these things that you don't realize that you have, and it's 
it's difficult to let go of them, as silly as that sounds, even though you don't know, know you have them. I was going through boxes of stuff and I'm like, oh, but like I might use this in like three weeks or a like, month. And I was like, no, She's like, get rid of it. Uh, so the transition was really hard getting into lifestyle. And then once we even moved into the van, it was kind of difficult for Alex for the first couple weeks. Well, so you move from this apartment into this van and you think you're gonna need all of these things. And so we jam packed every single nook and cranny of the van with everything that we thought we could possibly need. And then a week later we were like, oh my God, we need to go to Goodwill. We need to give this stuff away. Like things are like falling out of cabinets. And like, so we downsized once to get into the van and then we downsized again once we moved into the van. And then it seems like every once in a blue, like we're still downsizing. Like whenever yeah. we find something and we're like, this is not serving a purpose in our lives. But I think that we've just gotten better at it because we know what we need to live this lifestyle mm -hmm. and it's not a lot, you know? No. Like if we have food and we're warm, you know, what else could you possibly need? So I was gonna show you on the back here, we have that short hookup, which is actually a really unique spot to put it. On the back of your van, you actually have these little areas where they have to keep it open. So that way when you close your door, your windows don't blow out. It's for pressurization. So right here, I was able to run our power through and hook up. Actually, one of our followers, Steve, was the one to give me this idea. So thank you, Steve, so much. But yeah, we could hook up a 30 amp plug right here and be able to charge our battery bank if we're gonna be just hanging out in one spot for a while and we have the opportunity to hook up, we will. So inside the van here, this is the back storage area where we could store a ton of stuff. We have four different snowboards in this bag here because we love to be, uh, we love to van life in the winter time. So we have four snowboards for that. We have a bunch of storage for, this is like winter gear in here. Underneath we actually have uh, some materials for work. So like if anything goes bad, we have extra like fuses and like little nuts and screws and everything you think of, a little extra electrical stuff. You, when you are living in a van, one thing you have to know, you have to be handy. Uh, Cause there are going to be things that break that you just have to like get your hands dirty, figure it out and fix. We have this awesome little ladder right here. This ladder is just a telescoping ladder. It allows us to get to our roof where we have an awesome roof deck up there and also be able to clean off the solar panels because that's something you'll have to do to keep yourself pulling in as much power as possible. This is that 40 gallon fresh water tank. And as you can see, it's a nice flat tank. I put it on a little bit of a incline. So that way it always pushes the water to the front and I plumbed everything from the top down. So as you see right here, we have our fill coming in from the top down, our air bleeder coming in from the top down, and also even the front where it goes to the pump is coming from the top down. What that does is it allows to relieve pressure from water pushing on the tank. Now you don't have that water pushing in on that area so you don't have to worry about leaks happening. Uh, this is our little breaker box, little 30 amp breaker box. This right here is what allows us to have our short power. I always have it off when uh, we aren't, put, when we're not plugged in. Once we plug in, I'll flip the switch and it'll start giving power to us. This is where our battery bank is. We have three lithium ion, 100 amp hour batteries made from a company called Waze and we found ours on Amazon. This is an Ames inverter charge controller. This is a 2000 watt, so it will take care of all of our needs that we, that we have. So like it will use, you could use a curling iron for Alex. Um, we could charge any batteries that we have, uh, our drones, all that good stuff. It's a, it's a great inverter so far. It, it ha we've had no issues with it. Back in there, we also have our MPPT controller. We have a bunch of fuses and resettable breakers back there. Um, that way we could easily access them if any of them trip. So these are two things that I think everybody should have in van life. If you do have a hookup for a short power and you have a 30 amp, this is an, this is a extender that allows you to hook up to a 15 amp or a 20 amp hookup so you could hook up to a regular drop cord and be able to still power your van if you're ever if you have shore power and then this little guy is called a bandit a water bandit it's like a buck i think at home depot but it allows you to hook up to like just a regular faucet and you could stick that right on there hook your hose up and be able to fill your water tank
So one thing we wanted to have on our van this time around, we have a ton of friends who live in buses and every single one of them have a roof deck and it's always so much fun to chill on the roof, be able to look at the stars, you know, all that good stuff. So we put a roof deck on this van. We made sure we put a little uh, step in between so when it does snow we could get in between and be able to like push the snow off. And then we have two small decks in the front here so we have plenty of access for a bunch of people to hang out up here if we wanted uh, it just makes it extends your space a lot and honestly we've used it several times we actually got to eat dinner while watching the sunset on zion from up here it's like a magical moment i feel like so recently we just upgraded our tires so tires are like shoes if you're going to go on a hike and you don't have the proper shoes you're going to have a hard time doing it so these these vans normally come with like a street tire and if you're trying to go up some like pretty like gnarly roads 13 percent grades with uh just like rock everywhere you're going to be sliding while you're going up those roads you're going to turn off your traction control you're going to be pushing down that pedal all the way and it's going to be hard to make it up change your tires it will get you to amazing places and you'll be able you'll you won't get stuck as easy as well as you'll be able to get out of things a lot easier i, lo I love these ko2 tires they were a great upgrade with these tires though you will have to trim the wheel well in the back a little bit at least the plastic and if you want to give yourself about an inch and a half you'll have to trim the actual metal we have yet to do that we'll probably do that closer to the winter time when we start hitting snow when people ask us how long we plan on living van life i don't really have a very good answer because our original plan was to only live van life for one year and then settle down and buy a house and now that we've reinvested in a second van and we figured out a way to make money on the road and our travels are kind of self-funding at this point i don't really see us slowing down anytime i feel like it's weird. like would someone ask you like if you just moved into an apartment like how long are you planning on living in that apartment yeah <laughs> what's your answer i don't know maybe five years however maybe long two. i want to live in my apartment <laughs> like when i decide i want to move i'm gonna move however yeah. long this job lasts yeah so speaking of jobs the way that we create income is through YouTube as well as we sell things like this book right here. Alex wrote a book all about van life. It is all about our first year of travel, how we built our van, everything involved uh, in, in the lifestyle. So this is a, a great book, a great read for you to learn more about the lifestyle. It's available on Amazon. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so the easiest way to find us is FNA Van Life on every platform. So whether you want to look us up as our website, FNAVanLife.com, YouTube is FNA Van Life, our Instagram, is TikTok. FNA Van Life. Yep. All the things. Full branding across the whole every platform. <laughs> it's amazing. Nobody else wanted FNA Van Life. <laughs> <laughs> so FNA Van Life 2 is kind of like a, a play on words as well as it's also Frankie and Alex. Yeah, and also freaking awesome. Yeah. Thank you guys so much for watching this van tour. We're really excited to share Olive with you. We're excited to be back on the road in our brand new home and we can't wait to take you guys along for the adventure with us. So come on and follow the journey on our YouTube channel.